Hello everyone and welcome back to Tomorrow's and Beyond in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In the previous video we launched scanner probes to Jupiter, hopefully getting them into orbit around Callisto and Ganymede. And this time we're going to send the ISRU units, uh, the NC2 resource utilization units, to drill for those resources to convert them into fuel. Now, we haven't really tested it in this version of KSP. I tried to, whoops, I definitely didn't want to take one of those off. Uh, we tried to check on our ISRU units on the moon to see if they still work, but they didn't have the reactor resources that we've now added, so they weren't working. And so we don't know exactly whether they worked, but since I already tried them out on the moon in the previous season, I don't want to try them out on the moon again. So we're just going to send them straight to Ganymede and Callisto and see if they work. And the lander itself should have the fuel to land on both Callisto and Ganymede. It was designed to have enough Delta V to land on the moon with some to spare at a particular base. Ganymede's a little bit tight, Ganymede takes a little bit more than the moon, but not that much more. So I think it'll be alright. And I've enlarged uh, the ion stage, so that's why I'm not placing it alongside the ISRU unit. And we're putting it down here. And that has more delta V and burn time. Uh, but it is using the nuclear reactor that's on the ISRU unit already. So we're saving that amount. And maybe it'll need more radiators. Who knows? I've got full ML MLI layers here. Hopefully that'll control the boil off um, so that we have the fuel to land. Otherwise, if it boils off, we definitely can't land. But yeah, that's the downside to using an ion engine instead of a chemical engine here, you can't use it to start off your landing. Let's say there's reduced propellant in the lander. Well then, if this was just a chemical stage and we had some spare, it could start it off to make up for the boil-off deficit. This can't. So, yeah. But it does have the efficiency, so we'll go with that. And then we have the same hydrolock stage that we had previously, which didn't quite boost our payloads to series. But we are looking in this case to use the upper stage here for a lot of the transfer and that is because we have the Orion carrier planes as boosters. So our delta V margin hopefully should not be too bad. I tested this out in a video outside of this series, this arrangement, and verified that with the KSAE core the Orion carrier planes can get to their Bermuda, sorry not Bermuda, the Bahamas landing site. We, we fell a little bit off, but that was because I didn't do a very good job piloting. So, yeah. They are recoverable in theory. With uh, It was supposed to be with a 150 ton payload, or more than that, 180 ton payload. We're not carrying, we're not, well, anyway, we'll make sure that the Orion carrier planes get to where they need to go. All right. So, with that being said, let's take it outside and get on its way. Oh, I just brought it outside and I realized I forgot something because our orientation was wrong and that's because of course the ISR unit orientation is like that so we need a control core. Oh, we already have one here though. Um, well, we don't need that one anymore. Okay, we're not exactly lined up with the moon but hopefully it'll be close enough. I wanted a daytime launch, especially of this particular system. And, well, my throttle is not working, so we'll go like that. SAS on, ignition. And we have to wait for the core engines to spool up. The Rex engines spool up faster than the core engines. And we're off. So, 78 degrees. And roll zero. Every time... I swear, the terrain like clips more and more into the Tampico scenery. It, it always changes. Every single launch it's like different. And mostly it's like the Tampico terrain scenery, even though we can't see it right here. It's like it's sinking. <laughs> but uh, you can see the default terrain is definitely superseding it quite a lot. And I think uh, paying attention to that has caused me to mess up my trajectory here but yeah I mean it's just frustrating the inconsistency of it I'm gonna throttle down a bit 
that will help reserve propellant in the core. I think the core engines throw all that more than the engines on the Orion carrier plane. Okay. All right, a little bit faster than normal, but that's better for the Orion carrier planes to land at the Bahamas anyway. I guess we'll dump the fairings right there too. Okay, but that's too many things happening at the same time, for sure. Alright, not a whole lot of extra help from this stage in order to do our transfer, but it'll be some. Probably enough. Before I forget, when we end up trying to drill, I'm going to unlock the ore here. Otherwise, I'll think it's not working when it actually is, or trying to, anyway. Okay, 226 by 187, let's say. And we have a, a little less than 2,000 left over in this stage, 1,939. So, well, it'll give us something. Let's see what we can do with it. Okay, well, this isn't great, but it'll work with a mild mid-course adjustment, so we'll go with it. Okay, maybe getting there just in time here, or maybe a little bit late. Uh, selling the fuel down, and go. Let the engine turn. And I'm gonna switch to the core up here, otherwise we're going to have issues. Okay, next stage. All right, and we got to keep the note, and it seems like just enough, so all is good. I sized, that basically means I sized the ion stage properly, right? I increased the size of it to take advantage of the delta V that we had, and I did not do a bad job of that, so I'm happy. Okay, now it appears we have less because of the radial stuff, but... Um, We'll see. It might be okay. That ah, was short. All right. Well, I guess it's been stabilized anyway, sort of. <gasps> Wait, it, it flipped. It flipped around for some reason. Gosh darn it. Decided to flip around because why? Doing a great job turning over here. Guess I should have put extra thrusters on the ion stage or something. Okay. Well, now it's holding steady anyway. Hopefully, it won't suddenly flip out. Okay. Well, cut the engine. And let's just cut the RCS. The rest, I think, we're going to need to do with a mid-course adjustment. Now, liquid hydrogen is still boiling off, which I was hoping it wouldn't. But with, again, 100 MLI layers and a big, big radiator. So we will see. As we get out there, hopefully we'll get colder. Delta V wise, 8,800 should be good enough to get us into orbit of whatever. And whatever I'm hoping is Callisto, but not right there. That's a little bit early. Then, but then again, a nice little flyby of Callisto isn't too bad. But we'll take that as our initial approach to Jupiter and add that alarm for the mid course adjustment. And this is on its way out of the Earth system. So, let's launch another one for Ganymede. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, well, I, I, it's best to have two. It's best to send them in twos, just in case I do something wrong, but I can fix it with the other one or something. Yeah, let's just have another one, and I think we can get it over to Ganymede without any 
trouble, really. I say as if worried about jinxing it. Anyway, let's go to Space Center and prepare another one. Okay, going for a Dawn launch this time. I think it'll be a little bit better. Uh, we will see. And otherwise, no changes for this Ganymede ISRU unit. I did adjust the height of the terrain, but we can barely see that. All right, so throttle up. SAS is on and ignition and launch okay roll program complete okay past 30 kilometers Thing looking fine here. We have our last glimpse of the terrain before it disappears. I went a little bit shallower than usual, so we'll give them more speed. No, oh, I'm not supposed to turn all of them up. Off. Oh well. Okay, uh, separation. And fortunately, the ED9s do reignite, so no big problem, just a little bit of time lost there. All right, separation and fairing set. And that's not the engines I want. It looks like we'll probably get to orbit with about the same, about 2,000 meters per second or a little bit less than that. Okay, that is orbit. Let's get the radiator out. Uh, as if it had any effect, but it's necessary for drills anyway. Well, it says radiator cooling on. I would hope so with the reactor there. And let's plot for Jupiter again. We have a little bit more this time. I did it a little bit better. So hopefully we won't need to do the ion engine burn. Seems like this might take more of a mid-course adjustment. I'll try and put some of that into the initial burn. Yeah, the main course adjustment isn't too bad. Okay, so we will do this. Okay, and go. All right. Well, once again, I'm gonna control from up here so that we don't have problems when we separate. Okay, uh, well, let's cut that. Separation. Uh, separation. And. Alright. I made the node a little bit more delta V's, so we might end up a little bit short again and have to use the ion engines to finish. Once again, we'll see. So the plan for Starship is going to be to use it to haul fuel up mainly, uh, unless I think of something else. And especially the xenon gas, which is dense and heavy, but because it's dense, will not take up that much room, so it can fit inside the limitations of Starship's hold compared to the Kasei rocket, of course, which has a much bigger fairing. And yeah, that'll be the plan for Starship. I still need to work on the front end of the ships, I think, uh, the habitat area. I had created a Yaruki habitat area that was sophisticated, however, I'm not sold on the design. It's a little bit too goofy. So I'm gonna try and come up with a better shape. And in particular, I want to come up with a shape for the hab that is streamlined, which means that we don't have to put it inside a fairing. Uh, so I wanted more of a starship front end shape without it being actually starship. So, yeah. I'll work on that. And also, it probably can't be that big. Uh, 9 meters diameter would be probably too much. So, uh, yeah, it wouldn't be starship sized either. But 
maybe I'll make it so that it could fit inside Starship or be used later on as Starship's habitat area. I'll think about that. But the more things I want to do with it, the more trouble it is to make it, of course. But the pod bay thing, I had for the Yaruki habitat area for the ships, I had made a pod bay, but in trying to use that pod bay in practice with the little pod that I made for it, uh, that didn't seem to work out particularly well, so maybe we should scrap the entire pod bay idea and try to just use that area for living quarters or something like that. Yeah, one of the delaying factors for episodes is just I need to make a few models here and there. Somehow we ended up with 154 less, even though it seemed like we had enough, but okay. Well, I guess that's what the ion engine is for. It's, uh, it's doing that thing where it's not providing Delta V during time warp even though it's supposed to be able to do that. Let me go to the tracking station and come back. Ah, uh, reset the node. Well, we can just point prograde. No, nope, it's not providing thrust during time warp. What have I missed here? It's using the xenon gas. And it says we have thrust. We have the right thrust. Pointing prograde. Oh, this is going up. All right, all right. Maybe it was, it's just too subtle. Oh, no, no, it's not doing it during time warp. Yeah, it's not. But the last ship did, and I changed nothing. I changed nothing about it. Well, going to the tracking station didn't work, so I'll try and restart the game and see if that works. Okay, I restarted the game, and let's try this again. Uh, again, the node was reset already, and we want to go prograde. Well, let me just shut it down and activate again. Who knows? Turn it off and on, you know. We do have diminishing electric charge for some reason. We do have all the megajoules. Why do we have diminishing electric charge? Oh, wait, our electric charge says... 1,350 out of 1,320, which also doesn't make any sense. Why does this have more than the maximum amount of electric charge? And why does it only have 20 electric charge when I know I created with more than that? Maybe, okay. Hmm. I mean, this these, fi well, now it's filled up. It's got some bookkeeping issue. Oh, and then sometimes it randomly flips a... Look at that. Gosh. Uh, it's something between persistent thrust and something else, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but this is the first I've seen. Th th there's a weird flippiness where, where it suddenly flips. And then the weird electric charge bookkeeping. Uh, the most pertinent problem is that, uh, well, see, uh, that flip is weird. The most pertinent problem is that it's not working during time warp. Hmm. Okay, well, fine. Uh, let me check where the other one is, even though that'll throw off its orbit a bit. But it's weird that this electric charge is like this. Striking station, let's go to the other one. All right, well, I'm just gonna go over prograde here. First of all, uh, its electric charge is just 1320 by 1320. So no weird extra electric charge poking through. Well, it's changing our apoapsis there. And if I time warp, it continues to change our apoapsis during time warp. So it's working and it's probably thrown our orbit off, but that one works. Now this one now has 1320. That's good. 
Maybe the other vessel was able to remind it. Nope. <laughs> okay, maybe if it just holds stability. How about that? Okay, so in stability assist mode it can work, but not in prograde mode. In 1.8.1 in prograde mode it also worked. But it looks like it's just stability assist is the only one that can work with the time warp with the ion engines. Okay, well at least I figured it out, so. So that'll do it for our Jupiter missions for this go around. We do have a Jupiter opportunity every year, basically. So we don't have to rush it. Uh, we'll do something else in the next opportunity if we have some ideas. So next I need to uh, work on the vessels and again I'm trying to make some new models for the vessels to Mars. I also really want to make a whole new lander so that'll take some work and I mean modeling it in blender and everything so it'll be a custom thing that looks really in line with the moons too okay so that'll be our mid course adjustment there and that looks really good and that'll be in 364 days okay so two ISRU units out there and then we've got the series thing uh, we'll pass on Vesta and we'll just focus on Mars. So that is the plan. After all, for Vesta, we want to make sure that these things actually work. I think I've sent enough prospective uh, probes and ISRU units. I think at this point we need to try and build up our main mission. And we will see that going on in the next video. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.